Okay, it looks like we are live here. Um, so welcome everyone to Speech of Cake's first live video. We are super excited uh, to have you here. Um, <clears throat> we are going to be doing these once a month. So please keep up to date on our Facebook page. Uh, we will try to post the events ahead of time. Um, so tonight I have with me uh, Courtney Overton. She is the founder of Speech of Cake, and most of you probably know me. Um, my name is Mandy McClelland, and I am the client happiness specialist uh, for Speech of Cake. So if you have questions or if you're getting ready to book an appointment, usually um, you will talk to me first to get that set up. So tonight we are going to start with um, some common uh, questions that we get with Speech of Cake. And Courtney is going to address those questions. Um, at the end, if you guys have any additional questions that you would like answered, uh, feel free to put those in the comments and we will get to your questions. Um, otherwise, if you're catching the replay, please uh, comment hashtag replay, that way we know you're here. Um, and if you're catching this live, Send us an emoji in the comments or your questions. All right, and we will go ahead and get started. So, uh, Courtney, so what is a speech language pathologist? I know that we get this a lot. Yeah, so a uh, speech language pathologist is um, not just speech therapy. So, a lot of people think that we only work on articulation, like my kid can't say the R sound, or we're, we need to work on the S sound, but it's way more than that. Um, we also work on fluency skills, otherwise um, known as stuttering, as well as expressive and receptive language. So the language piece is super important because it includes lots of things like vocabulary, um, things like syntax or grammar, and it also includes literacy. So that's within our scope of practice too. So you may hear it called um, SLP or speech therapist, or some people even say speech teacher if they're working in the schools. Um, but it does require a master's degree. And even after you get your master's, you still have to uh, work under supervision. So you may see, um, CCC after my name, which means I have the certificate of clinical competence. And you may see um, the letter CF after another speech language pathologist's name, which means that they're in the clinical fellowship. So that means that they are working towards their C's, their CCC, um, but they have not yet acquired enough hours. And that's usually around um, 400 hours after you get your master's degree. Right, okay, awesome. Yeah, and then also we have our co-founder, um, Lee. She is um, a special education teacher. So can you give us a little bit of insight as far as like what she does with Speech of Cake and yeah. um, a little bit of information as far as um, what they do? Yeah, so um, in the world of education, you know, you can be lots of different teachers and get different certifications. So Lee, our co-founder, is duly certified in both general and special education. Um, so she got her degree in elementary education, and then um, that was her undergraduate degree. And then she went on and she went to graduate school, and that's where she got her master's in special education. So she's qualified to teach kids um, with a range of abilities. And um, the special piece of the special education teacher just means that they're able to adapt lessons um, according to the student's ability. So that's where we always talk about differentiation. Differentiation, like, you know, we may have a group where they're all third graders, but they're reading on different levels. So they may, um, one kid may be reading on a kindergarten level, for example, and another may be reading on a second grade level. They're, they're below, they're below grade level, but they require different things depending on um, what level that they're trying to meet and how far that gap is. And she can help widen that gap. 
Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, okay, so before we move on to the next few questions, um, I'm going to double check. I know we have a few viewers here, um, so I just want to make sure we don't have any comments yet. I'm just going okay. to check and make sure so you don't want to miss anything. Yes. Okay. So again, if you have questions um, or just let us know that you're here, um, send us an emoji or put your questions in the comments and in just a few minutes, we will make sure that we get to that. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any questions as of right now. All right, so we will go ahead and continue with um, our next set of FAQs. So a lot of parents want to know before they um, set up their appointments or consultations, they want to know usually how long their child will be in an intervention program and when should they start their intervention program? What are some signs that parents need to watch out for? Um, as well as does it vary per child as far as each intervention program? Yeah, that's another common question. Um, and the answer that nobody wants to hear is it depends. Um, because it really does depend on a number of different variables like their age, as well as um, their level of severity, you know, what they're working on and what type of behavior they have, um, their motivation, um, the parent's motivation. Um, so there are a lot of factors. Um, definitely the earlier the better. Uh, when you are developing your speech and language skills, you usually develop your nonverbal skills first. So things like eye contact. Um, so if an infant is not making eye contact, that would be a red flag. Um, if they're not doing some of those other nonverbal um, things like laughing or smiling, um, that could be another red flag. And then later on, once you get to um, like the toddler time, like two, three years old, um, at age one is when you're expected to say your first word. And then you acquire your language, whether that be um, Usually you acquire nouns first, like my first word was cake. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really like to eat cake and now I have speech of cake. Um, and then <laughs> adding on verbs. Um, so like want cake, like cake, give me cake <laughs> around age two. And that's where you start to see um, those two word phrases. And then later on, um, the speech becomes a little bit more intelligible. So that just means that uh, unfamiliar listeners are able to understand you. So, you know, when you're two, you might not be saying cake. You might just say K, but your mom knows what K means. But maybe when you go to school, K, <laughs> nobody knows what K means. So then that's when um, we start to see... Um, the articulation piece come into play when you're worried about, um, you know, how well can I understand my child and how well can other people understand my child? And then once we get to school age, when things become even more complex, so they're expected to follow multi-step directions, like um, place your paper in the bin and then go put your backpack away pack up, put your backpack on, walk down the hall, and get ready to get on the bus. So that's where we talk about um, multi-step directions, uh, specifically receptive language, how well you're able to understand what other people are saying to you, how well you're able to understand it, and then go and follow those directions. Also around the school age, that's when you start to see um, other language pieces, uh, such as literacy. So you know, learning to read and write. Um, and I know that another common question about um, diagnosing things like dyslexia, I don't feel comfortable diagnosing it under age seven because I do believe that they need a chance to be exposed to academic ex instruction. And then we can uh, visit that conversation. So the intervention program can last anywhere. It can vary months to years um, it just really depends on what you need to target and how severe 
Um, so if a student um, is not talking at all, you know, at age five, then that's very different than a child that's not talking quite yet at 18 months. Right, right. And each of our um, sessions are individualized um, curriculum. Is that correct? Yes. So we typically perform a baseline assessment during that first um, session so that we can see, you know, what's going on, what are your strengths, what are your needs, and then we individualize all of the sessions to um, fit the child's needs from there on, and that's called the treatment plan. Right, right, and we do offer free consultations, um, so we definitely encourage parents to reach out to us for that free consultation. Um, that's just basically a time for you as the parent to meet with Courtney and address your concerns, um, you know, ask your questions. Uh, Courtney will be there for resources, and then that's when we kind of start um, a game plan as far as um, your own intervention program. So, um, and again, we do work with children ages four to 18. Um, so, and we also, um, we do have, which I would like to mention, um, we do have, which we'll talk about maybe a little bit at the end of our um, program here, but we do have our summer enrichment program, which we are taking registrations for. Those mm -hmm. are for ages 10 and up, if I'm correct, Courtney. And uh, summer is age four to, up to 10. 10. Four to 10, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so up to ages 10. And um, so yeah, we are taking applications for that right now and registering students. Um, if you have any questions as far as pricing um, or uh, the what exactly this program is for, again, this program is individualized curriculum. Um, it's just basically to um, help your child with um, that little kind of boost of education that they miss out during the summer. It's a wonderful program. Um, it's definitely our award-winning program. We have won several awards, um, which we are very proud of. So if you have any questions, um, I <clears throat> encourage you guys to go to speechofcakeinc.com forward slash summer. And again, send us an email and reach us out to us if you have any additional questions. Um, so we will continue with um, the rest of our FAQs. So another um, common question is um, some parents want to know if they are allowed to observe a child's uh, session. Yeah, that's another common question. And it is a touchy subject because, you know, we don't want to say um, what you can and cannot do as a parent, but we do encourage parents to uh, step out of the session and uh, so with COVID and everything now, we typically have the parents wait um, in the waiting room and we don't invite them into the session. We know there's pros and cons to having a parent in the session, but for some children having a parent in the room can actually be very distracting. Um, even when the parent doesn't participate, the child will look to the parent when there is a difficult situation and there's always going to be a difficult situation. That's why they're in speech therapy. So we are going to ta challenge them and <laughs> are going to help them through those challenging situations, but we definitely want them to gain that independence so that they are able to communicate, they are able to read and write independently. That's our ultimate goal. So even if, like I said, the parent doesn't participate, we tend to see that the child retreats to their parent when they need assistance. And this means that they're very likely to um, depend on that parent, as I said. So it does depend on um, that professional's opinion, obviously, but um, we tend to discourage parents participating. Sure, and, sure. And after the session, um, when we're all finished with that one-on-one -on -one session, we always debrief with the parent and we let them know what we worked on. Um, we provide a note so that you have um, that data of how they did during the session, and we also provide homework. So the communication is definitely right. there, and we also offer um, complimentary quarterly meetings so that we can check in um, with the parents and let them know. And this is every quarter to have an extensive conversation because sometimes after the session, it might be just 
it's quick, you know, it's a five minute check-in, but every quarter we offer those 30 minute sessions um, with the parents and the SLP or the tutor or the teacher so that um, they can get uh, a longer conversation. They can get more in depth, you know, why are you doing this? What do you expect to happen next? Um, kind of like that prognosis um, conversation too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely beneficial um, for each of our clients, those quarterly meetings, I feel. Um, as a parent, I think that they um, are definitely beneficial for the parent to kind of reach out and check in to check on their child's progress. Um, so, yeah, those are something that um, is offered when you sign up for um, your speech sessions. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, another question. Do we accept insurance? So we are currently a fee-for-service provider or pay-for-service provider, you may hear it called. So that means that um, your payment is required at the time of service. Um, so we don't accept uh, medical insurance, but we do provide a super bill. So a super bill, if you're meeting with me or any of the other speech therapists, um, we are able to do that. Um, because we are technically medical providers and our license is through the Virginia Board of Health, we are considered medical providers. So we provo provide this super bill, which is also known as a medically coded receipt. So this medically coded receipt has the diagnosis code on it. It also has the treatment code on it. It states how much you have paid to Speech of Cake. And it has all of our um, information in terms of Speech of Cake's EIN, which is our basically business social security number. And it also has um, the SLP's NPI, which is our national provider identification number. And that states that we are able to provide this medical service and what else does it have? Your address, our address. Um, so this is basically a receipt so that you can submit it to your medical insurance. And at that point in time, your medical insurance will decide at what percentage they will reimburse you. And so you've already paid for the session, but then your medical um, company may um, provide, you know, some type of reimbursement, whether that be 50% to 80%. Um, we've seen anywhere in between that range. Unfortunately, we've not seen 100%, but um, we have seen a range anywhere up to about 80%. Right, right. And again, we send those out um, once a month. So otherwise, um, for example, if you guys have um, once a week lessons, you will be um, responsible to pay for your lesson in full each week. And otherwise you will get that receipt um, or super bill um, once a month from us to submit to your insurance company for reimbursement. Yeah, that's great. So our last uh, question that we get is what is our cancellation policy? So Courtney, can you touch base on this and kind of um, inform everyone, you know, what our expectations are, why we have this cancellation policy, and should they need to cancel, um, what uh, what they need to do? Yeah, I'll just start with, you know, we're all humans. We know that things happen. So, you know, um, we do have a cancellation policy, but there's always exceptions to the rule. Uh, for our cancellation policy, we do request that you let us know at least 24 hours in advance. So luckily with the platform that we use called Simple Practice, um, if you have a face-to-face -face session or an online session, it sends you a reminder 24 hours in advance. So as soon as you receive that, whether that's an email or a text, you can email um, either one of us, myself or Mandy, and let us know that you'd like to cancel your session. And you will not be charged a fee for that. Um, however, if you cancel, you know, five minutes before or an hour before, then unfortunately we have to install um, we have to instill our cancellation policy, which is actually the price of your session. Um, so you do have this reserved weekly session every week. Um, so this 
appointment is special to you and we want to maintain that relationship with you. Um, unfortunately, also, if you don't show up for your appointment, um, the cancellation uh, fee will be in place at that point in time, too. Right. But as I said, you know, if you're if it's an emergency, we're not going to we're not going to ask for the cancellation fee for things like emergencies and sicknesses. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so that will basically end um, our FAQs um, and common questions that we get. Um, so we'll take a couple minutes here. Courtney, if you're ready, um, we'll see if anyone has any questions they would like to ask us. Um, so we will go into a little Q&A session here. Um, otherwise, uh, while we're kind of waiting on people uh, in case if they have any questions, uh, Courtney, do you want to kind of touch base on our summer enrichment program, how they can register, um, expectations, things like that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we are registering now. Um, registration actually opened, I believe, November 1st. Um, we will be located in uh, Old Town, Alexandria, and we have a really beautiful space. It's a great classroom, and uh, the staff consists of myself as well as Lee, our general special education teacher, as well as another speech language pathologist and two assistants. So we have um, great staff and we're admitting eight people, eight students uh, per session. So um, for example, we have three options in terms of the timing. So you can attend all day, like nine to four, or you can attend half day, either uh, 9 to 12 or 1 to 4. So um, some students decide to come for the full day, 9 to 4, and so they're counted from the 9 to 12 plus the 1 to 4 because we really want to keep um, our number um, really low because we believe that it really helps with individualized instruction. So that individualized instruction will look like um, all collaborating and coming together for a morning or afternoon meeting. And this really helps with social skills and team building. So we usually start, we have a specific agenda that we follow to allow everyone to share and work, work on their public speaking skills and work on um, their social skills in terms of, you know, remembering what that other person just said, so I can piggyback on that and have that continued conversation. Um, we also have a literacy block for reading and writing instruction. We have a speech and language block where we work on expressive and receptive language as well as articulation skills. And then the last piece is the STEAM activity. So the STEAM activity, um, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. So that's where we do some type of hands-on group activity, whether that be um, making something together like ice cream or slime, yeah. or building something together like a tower or a bridge and seeing, you know, how the different materials do um, with different weights. And that really helps us to combine all together. So that incorporates the social skills, the executive functioning skills, the speech skills, the articulation, language, reading, writing. Um, so it's really nice to see that all come together. And then at noon is when we have lunch and recess outside. And then um, the afternoon is um, the same schedule, but with different activities to keep it exciting for both us and the kids. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. With COVID, we do um, check temperatures upon arrival. And in the state of Virginia, students um, age five and up are required to wear a mask. So the students will be wearing masks and all of us, we will be wearing masks as well. Right, and are face shields acceptable? Yes, um, so with the face shield, it's really important for um, me. I think I, I, I like the face shield because when I'm working on, um, whether it be a speech session or a literacy session, I need the child to be able to see my mouth. So I definitely 
prefer the face shield. Um, if I'm teaching an articulation session, talking about S, I need you to see my feet coming together. If I'm um, working on reading and I want them to know that the letter S says that's still sound instruction. So yeah. I, I prefer that they see my mouth. But yeah, everybody um, prefers different things. <laughs> Right, right. And again, to go back to the summer enrichment program, you know, this individualized curriculum, we do evaluation. So we're not just grouping these eight kids together and, you know, teaching them all the same thing at once. Um, you know, with these evaluations, can you go a little bit more in depth as far as, you know, how we make this individualized curriculum? Sure. So we do have our intake forms, which gives us a lot of good information on paper. But then after that, we'd like to dive in more. So typically um, in May or June is when we have our um, evaluations. And these evaluations are included in the price of the summer enrichment program. They're not an added cost. And it really gives us a nice um, peek into how they're doing. So we usually have um, our speech language pathologist and her assistant conduct a speech and language evaluation. So you will see us holding up different pictures and listening to how they pronounce the sounds, or we may have a conversation with them. And it may look like we're just talking, but we're evaluating simultaneously. So we may ask things like, you know, what did you do on your last birthday? And not only are we listening to how they say things like the R sound or the TH sound in birthday, but we also want to know, you know, can they um, sequence? Can they tell us, well, last year I did this and use those that temporal language we're looking at. And we're also looking at, um, we may ask them, you know, how do you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Can they sequence that? Um, and then with the uh, other side of things, the literacy side, um, typically Lee and her assistant, they assess reading and writing skills. So they may ask the child to write the alphabet in all uppercase and all lowercase to see what their letter formation looks like, if there's any letter reversal. And they may also ask them you know, what sound does the letter B say, and ask them to read um, CVC words, consonant, well, consonant words like C-U-P, to see how well they're, they can decode at the word level. And right, right. And is really good because we do those assessments again during the summertime toward the end of the program. So we have that pre and post data, and we send parents a summer um, end of the summer report too, so that they can have tangible evidence of their child's progress. Yeah, yeah, so it's not just speech skills that they're learning, they're learning social skills, they're learning literacy skills, they're learning um, they're learning writing skills as well, is that correct? Yep, yep, it's all intertwined. Right, and right. It fun, so we're not standing in the front of the classroom and lecturing, everything is <laughs> play-based, hands-on, active, um, we're moving, we're dancing, <laughs> we're making yeah. letters with our body, you know, it's fun. <laughs> right, right. And, and so to touch base on those intake forms, so those intake forms, um, if you're interested in our summer enrichment program, uh, feel free to email Courtney or I. Um, my email is mandy at speechofcakeinc.com. Courtney's email is Courtney at speechofcakeinc.com. You know, express your interest or leave us a comment here on this broadcast um, or any one of our Facebook posts. Uh, send us a message on our website, whatever is easiest for you, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and as soon as you express your interest, we will send you those intake forms uh, through our program called Simple Practice. And that is a program that we use to take payments um, and basically you'll set up your own little profile. Um, as soon as uh, we will uh, send you those intake forms, uh, we will uh, take a 50% deposit and that just holds your spot um, to ensure that your spot is held uh, throughout the program and then we charge on the first day of summer enrichment, the other 50% deposit. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's super simple. You just log on to Simple Practice, fill out your forms and we will take care of the rest. That's right. So, 
All right. It looks like we don't have any comments. All right. So I guess we will take this time to go ahead and end the broadcast. Again, guys, we will be live here once a month. Um, so if there is a topic that you want Courtney to um, brief on, or if you guys have questions, email us. Um, again, uh, make a comment here on this broadcast and we will get back to you. Um, but otherwise, we will be doing these once a month and look forward to um, sharing our news and updates with you. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, we will go ahead and end, and we will see you next month. Yep. See you in February. All right. Thank you.